Well, good evening, high school football fans. Well, here is the frenzy. It's on to round two of the Georgia and South Carolina playoffs. I'm Dave Williams. I'm Rick Snow, and teams are looking to move one step closer to a trip to Mercedes-Benz Stadium or Williams-Brice Stadium and a shot at a, at a, a, a state championship. We begin in Savannah at T.A. Wright Stadium, where the Benedictine Cadets hosted Westside Macon and AAA. This was a thriller. The Cadets and Seminoles clashing in the second round. BC on the move early in the game, and uh, Jakeen Harris with an 11-yard pickup for a first down at the 15. Then they call on Rico Powers from the four. He finds the hole and takes it in for the score. It was 7-0 Benedictine. Back comes Westside. Tyshawn Freeman, a 5'11", 220-pound running back, powers his way for a nice gain. Then Victor Dixon Jr. unloads one deep down the far sideline, but Jaquan Martin is there to break it up for the cadets at the 10. Benedictine Dixon comes marching downfield as Carter Morgan turns the corner and picks up a first down, which fires up the sideline. On fourth and three at midfield, Carter Gurner, he goes deep and finds Powers at the 30. He races the rest of the way to put the cadets up 14 to nothing in the first quarter. And the cadets win a wild one, 43 to 36 after falling behind at halftime. And they move on to the quarterfinals where they will face Cedar Grove. At Memorial Stadium, another class AAA second round affair as Jenkins County hosts Pike County. Jenkins leading 16 to nothing in the second quarter. Treshawn Brown fires deep downfield for Darius Bush, who makes an outstanding catch across midfield. Then Brown's pass in the flat is knocked down, almost picked off by linebacker Gabe Ramsey. That would have been a pick six. Pike County with the ball. Aquilo Stone and Clarence Betterson make the stop for Jenkins. A two-yard loss. Then Gerald Hines picks up 10 yards for the Pirates, but the ball is on the ground, and Wayne Pringle has it for Jenkins. But the Warriors weren't able to do anything with it as Billy Henderson sacks Brown for a huge loss, but Jenkins' defense would allow them to hold off Pike County 16-9 to advance to the third round of the playoffs, and they will be going on. They will be going on the road. Now the class single-A private action, second round action, and Pooler Stadium where Savannah Christian hosts Hebron Christian, and the Raiders led this one 14 to seven at halftime, and their defense was helping protect a lead. They swarmed the quarterback there on that tackle, and then on the next play with Hebron Christian going for the end zone, Omar Burroughs does the nice job of knocking the potential touchdown pass away, and Mr. Burroughs will do it again later in the quarter, this time coming up with the interception, oh, yeah. and he makes a nice, some nice running here, and he will put, as I try to get it, <laughs> video of him there, as he gets inside scoring position. However, they couldn't capitalize on it. No scoring, though, in the second half. The Raiders hold on to win 14-7 to and move on to the Elite Eight. At Specialty Sports Complex, Calvert Day leading Holy Innocent 17-6 at halftime in single-A private. Third quarter, the Golden Bears come out on fire. Matt Davis keeps it, races 21 yards to score. It was 17-12. Back come the Cavs, though. Thomas Carver to Grant Thomas for a 9-yard, 11-inch pickup to the 37. On the next play, Carver with a great fake. I have to say that because he faked me out. <laughs> he and he races out, yes. to the end zone to put Calvary up 24 to 12. It's happened to all of us. <laughs> the Calvary defense forces a punt, but the snap is to the up man. Jake Felton's pass to Leighton Dixon, broken up by Cameron Selders. And Calvary had the ball moments later. Jalen Leary. He gets the call. He's off to the races, running all away from everyone and takes it to the house. Calvary pulls away for a 52-12 victory. They will play again next week, of course. The busy night continues with Class 6A action at Richmond Hill where the Wildcats host coffee in. The Wildcats trail this one 14 to nothing in the second when their defense comes up big. Jordan Clark comes up with an interception to put a halt to the coffee drive, but the Trojans return the favor as Burks 
Pikeus comes up with the interception of his own to end a Richmond Hill threat. Then the Richmond Hill defense gets on the scoreboard. The huge hit of the quarterback forces the fumble. Watch out as John Mastrali picks it up, and he's headed to the happing hunting ground for the touchdown. Rumbling, rumbling, rumbling. He got there, though, 14-7. Coffee at that point. It wasn't enough, though, as Coffee eliminates Richmond Hill 20-7. We're just scratching the surface here on the frenzy. Much more still to come. All right, including a trip to the Low Country to check in on May River and all the GISA playoff action. All that and more when the frenzy continues. Welcome back to the frenzy as we move over to the low country. Yeah, and that juggernaut that is May River looking to keep its undefeated season going as they host Gilbert. What a story it is for May River uh, this year as they uh, just have been great. Here is a play action bomb by quarterback Ahmad Green to wide receiver oh, Jack wow. Egan. Man, is that gorgeous. May River will come up with a touchdown here. Ahmad Green again. Watch him follow his blockers. He puts it into the payoff pasture. May River is up in this one by a score seven to nothing. Extra point good. May River will then come up on the defensive side of the ball. Josh Strickland. He will slow throw a slant, but May River defensive back Caleb Falk says, tip uh, drill. no, tip drill and runs it back to the sideline before being tackled in Gilbert territory. May River continues. Ahmad Green, he will juke his way with some crazy run into the end zone. Look at that. Stares down his tackler at the end. <laughs> <laughs> and May River, then Ahmad Green will slip his way through the Gilbert defense into the end zone. May River led 14 to nothing. 
And they go on to win this one to stay unbeaten, 27 to 7. Nice. The final score there. Now to the GISA playoffs and over to Garden City Stadium, where Memorial Day hosts Brentwood, and it's the War Eagles drawing first blood in this one. Is quarterback McKinley Newton? He'll air it out and find a wide open Chase Everett for the score. Brentwood leads 7 to nothing. However, the Blue Thunder would respond. Deshaun Pinkston swings it out to Del Vecchio Powell. And Rick, I think you know what he's going to do with this one. He's touchdown bound. PAT no good. 7 to 6 in favor of Brentwood. Later in the quarter, it's Del Vecchio Power again with another nice run, although this one wouldn't lead to any points. But there were plenty of points in this one. He's tough. Yes, and Memorial wins this one by a score of 38 to 36. Wow, what a game. A couple of really great ones. BC scoring a lot of points tonight. And, you know, the funny thing about the Calvary game against mm. Holy Innocence, right. it ended up 52 to 12. Holy Innocent scored on their first possession in the first half, and their first possession in the second half. That's Nothing all they else. did. Yeah, that was it. Otherwise, the Calvary and defense plenty, shut them down. And plenty of points for Calvary in between. <laughs> and you know what? Calvary looks looks pretty strong. Wayne County lost tonight, which was a bit of a surprise. Yeah, they surprise, lost to yes. Bainbridge in their undefeated season. We thought most of our hopes was going to be with B.C., and with Wayne County, possibly as yep. far as the state championship, but don't discount the Calvary Cavaliers. They're, they're, they've got a juggernaut there, and it would not surprise anyone if they make it to the state championship. We can't championship. count out Savannah Christian either. Exactly. Yeah. They're number two in the power ratings. So. Exactly right. So if we could have a productive, even though Wayne County, as I said, a bit of a shock mm -hmm. losing tonight 26 to 19. But congratulations to uh, Coach Ken Cribb and that crew there for having the kind of season they've done. And what a great job he's done with that uh, program at Wayne County. Now, this week's winners, it's on to the Elite Eight, and of course, one step closer to that trip to the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. And we'll be back to put a wrap on things right after this. 